Chat Sports. It's the NFL Daily Saints season schedule prediction. My name is Carter the Power Bryant, and we are back, and you know we're bringing the golden pom-poms back, baby. Why don't they get me to be a sensation? Why not? Anyway, let's run through the schedule. Why not? And I know what you're thinking. Really? Saints schedule? This early in the year? Yes, because Las Vegas has already released their win totals. Yes, because Vegas never sleeps. And a lot of you degenerates want to bet this. And you have just been waiting to hear my opinion on this. So, two things before we get started. I want you to go subscribe to Chat Sports YouTube page. And there you get every single video. You get Cowboys. You get Saints. You get the Montreal Alouettes. One of those is not true. So, go to Chat Sports. Subscribe to the YouTube account. Okay? Also, go to my Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. All the same name. At Carter the Power. You can find me on FarmersOnly.com as well. At Carter the Power. Let's dive into this schedule. Saints right now currently sit 10 and a half wins as their over under total. And we want to run through the schedule to let you know if the Saints are actually going to go over that total like they did last year, going 13 and 3, even after losing their opening week game against Tampa Bay and almost losing week two to the Cleveland Browns. But that's the crazy thing about the NFL. It's an up and down league, and it's going to be a pretty rough season for the New Orleans Saints when it comes to schedule difficulty. That's why we're here to help you out to break this down. Really quickly, let's go through the preseason schedule. The Saints will play the Minnesota Vikings at home on August 9th. Then on August 18th, they'll take on Drew Brees' former team, the Los Angeles Chargers in LA. Then on August 24th, they'll go on the road to the New York Jets. And then on August 29th, they'll take on the Miami Dolphins. Preseason smee season. Come on, no one cares. Let's get into the actual meat. The Saints' schedule is tough. There's no other way around it. First thing that jumps out, though, four primetime games. Last year, they played five. This year, they'll play four, three of which, though, will be at home. And that is key, the home field advantage, the dome field advantage. And that is actually where we start this year where they will take on the Houston Texans, one of the most talented teams in the NFL. They get Deshaun Watson back, They're Jadavion Clowney, J.J. Watt, maybe the best wide receiver in the NFL and DeAndre Hopkins. That's all great and dandy, but this is the Saints. This is opening night. This is a 6 p.m. first kick of the season for the Saints. This is an easy win. You can go out ahead and blood bank guarantee it. The Saints win this game at home to start off 1-0 on the season. And this is where it gets really interesting. Now, it's strange whenever you say that the juiciest game on the schedule is in week two, but that's the case where the Saints will play the team that defeated them in the conference championship game the Los Angeles Rams, and they have to go to LA to play the Rams, where the Rams have been great under Sean McVay. They are so good at home. With that said, I'm actually getting the Saints to pull this upset. I understand short rest. I understand um, the time zone travel. So you only have six days to prepare, um, and obviously going to the West Coast is always rough. With that said, revenge is definitely going to play a factor. I can see the NFL referees giving some makeup calls late. But something else, I'm selling Los Angeles Rams stock. I don't believe in them next year. They're going to have a Super Bowl hangover worse than an Irishman on March 18th. It's going to be that bad. The hangover for the Rams, I don't like them. I, I think too many personalities on that team. I think they're going to decline. I think Jared Goff will sink back down into mediocrity. But enough about the Saints, more about their 2-0 record. Before we get going, though, we already have a 2-0 start. A lot of people think 1-1, maybe 0-2. I like the Saints right now. But for my season schedule predictions, I need you to subscribe to the Chat Sports account on YouTube. So you can see all my hot takes on New Orleans Saints football. Once again, at Chat Sports all season long, 
video after video after video. So, a lot of people that are probably just passing through, no way the Saints go to LA and beat the Rams. Who is this super biased Udat fan? Slow down, because next week, I see the Saints getting throttled by what I believe will be a really good Seattle Seahawks team. It's two straight games on the West Coast. This game will be on the road. It's a 325 kickoff. That's just tough. Whenever you play two tough games to start the year and then you have to face off against a mobile quarterback, that can be pretty tough on Cam Jordan and Marcus Davenport. Whenever you play a mobile quarterback, your defensive ends have to be fantastic. With that said, I think the, the Saints, because of the two tough opening week games, will lose this game. Now, next week will be the second Saints primetime game. They will be at home against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, we all remember last year, Saints losing 13-10 to to the Cowboys in what was a rough game. And one thing about the Saints... They love to manipulate the other team's linebackers. I don't think there's a better linebacker core in the NFL than the Dallas Cowboys with Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith. But remember, that was a Thursday night football game. Go look at the record of Thursday night football teams on the road last year. It is not good. And for me, the Saints are in a better position. They're at home on primetime television. And also, the same thing for Jared Goff. I think Dak Prescott falls back down to earth. I I, I don't really get the, the, the Dak love. He's not even a top 15 quarterback to me. So I'm going Saints over the boys all day long at home. Three and one, the Saints will take care of business. Now, this has always been the trickiest division game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they've been so up and down over the years. This is a Buccaneers team with back-to-back 5-11 and seasons. But in back-to-back years, they have split with the New Orleans Saints. But once again, the Saints are at home. This is a noon kick. I like the Saints, and I think Jameis Winston, this will be the third middle-tier quarterback the Saints will face. I think they move on to four and one. So what I want you to give me in the comment section below, predict the Saints record. Do you think they'll be four and one at this point? What do you think their final number is going to be? Are you going to agree with me a little bit later on my final season record? Will they be over 10 and a half wins? Comment below and you'll find out mine at the end of the video. What are you talking about? You're probably like, no, well, you tell us. What do you think? Well, that's why you got to stay put because we're still rolling through the schedule, baby. As the Saints, the next week will be on the road to play Saxonville, one of the best pass rushing teams in the NFL, the Jacksonville Jaguars. That'll be a noon kick against Nick Foles, who played well against the Saints last year in the playoffs. With that said, give me the Hoodats in Jacksonville. I still think the Jaguars are an extremely flawed team. And once again, this is another middle-tier quarterback that the Saints are going to face next year. And Nick Foles, give me the Hoodats in that spot. Now, another middle-tier quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, will be the next quarterback the Saints will face as they will go on the road to face the Chicago Bears. But when you play the Bears, you're not necessarily going up against the Chicago Bears. You're going up against creative play calling on both sides of the ball and Khalil Mack coming off the edge. The Bears are one of the best home teams in all of the NFL. Something else you have to mention is that this will be the Saints' first cold weather game. This is a 325 kick, so travel shouldn't be as big of an issue as if it was a noon kick. With that said, the Saints, a dome team, first cold weather game of the year against a great pass rush. After winning in Jacksonville the week before, the Saints will fall to 5-2 and two after losing to the Chicago Bears. Now, there are no layups in the NFL, but the next week, the Saints travel back home on October 27th to take on the Arizona Cardinals at noon. And the Cardinals are going to have a new head coach in Cliff Kingsbury, and they have a new quarterback in Kyler Murray. And there's a lot of people that are doubting the Arizona Cardinals. I am too, 
But what I will tell you is that they're going to run the most unique offense in the NFL next year. And I think it's going to be tricky the first year stopping Kyler Murray because he is such a unique quarterback. The same way Robert Griffin III had success in his first year, um, a lot of people didn't know how to defend him because he played such a unique style of football. I think the same thing is going to hold true here, but I think the Saints will have enough to defeat an Arizona Cardinals team to me, that still lacks a lot of talent on defense. So the Saints will win this game, and they will move to 6-2. and They will lick their wounds during the bye week. And then comes the game that most Saints fans look forward to, the Atlanta Falcons, the Dirty Birds, coming to the Dome, the most hated rival of the New Orleans Saints. I don't think the Saints will ever lose to the Atlanta Falcons at home coming off a bye. This is my lock of all locks. If there's a game that I was going to predict that the Saints are actually going to win, it's going to be this one. If they don't, I'm going to be so angry, I'm going to jump into a volcano. And you don't want to see me jump into a volcano, do you, Drew Brees? Win this game. Don't lose to the Falcons. Please, at home. Let's get this dub. Sorry, I just can't do the Falcons. Anyway, the Saints will move to 7-2 and two next year after that win. But this, to me, is one of the more shocking losses of the year. A lot of people are predicting Tampa Bay to be bad. I don't think Tampa Bay is going to be good either, but the Bucks always play the Saints tough. I think they split for the third consecutive year. Saints will lose in Tampa. Remember last year... The Saints were actually down early. They had to come back and and beat Tampa. They were down 14-0, 14-3, something like that. And they struggled, but they were able to come back and eventually win that game comfortably. But the Saints moved to 7-3. Now, before we get going, remember, follow me on all the social medias, at Carter the Power. Once again, at Carter the Power. C-A-R-T-E-R-T-H-E-P-O-W-E-R. Make sure you go follow at Chat Sports as well. Another interesting game against the Carolina Panthers is the next week, and that's a home game at noon central. I think the Saints will have enough to win this one as well. Um, The tough thing about Carolina is your linebacker play has to be great. Whenever you face Cam Newton and you face Christian McCaffrey, they like to throw underneath a lot. you know, it's always a tough game and a tough defend uh, for, for the Saints. Last year, the Saints lost to the Carolina Panthers' final home game of the year. Guess what? A little bit later in the schedule, the final game of the year will be the Carolina Panthers. I do think the Saints win this one at home despite losing to the Panthers at home last year to move to 8-3. and three. Now, this is another interesting game. The Saints will be on the road on Thanksgiving against, to me, what will be one of the more improved teams in the NFL, the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, you got to play them on Thanksgiving, short rest, 720 kickoff. No way the Falcons lose this game. That's going to be a tough one for the Saints to win. Calvin Ridley, I think, is going to make a Juju Smith-Schuster type of jump in year two. Give me the Falcons in this one as the score uh, as the Saints record will move to eight and four. Now, this game might upset the most Saints fans as far as a prediction is concerned. And yes, I just did pick the Saints to lose to the Dirty Birds. But to me, the most improved team in the NFL this year, the San Francisco 49ers. And I would even look at putting some some cheddar on the 49ers at 25 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I love Jimmy G at quarterback. I love what they did at offseason, picking up Tevin Coleman at running back. I love getting Bosa in the draft. I love them getting D Ford. They're going to have a really good pass rush. I think they not only win this game, they're going to end up winning the NFC West next year. And whenever you actually see how good the 49ers will be next year, you will not be shocked that the Saints lose to them at home. Yes, I am picking the Saints to lose at home. They will move to 8-5 and five on the year. I want to throw out another audience question. Do the Saints win the NFC South? Type Y for yes and N for no 
in the comments. Once again, type Y for yes and N for no in the comments, okay? Moving along to the Indianapolis Colts, another primetime game, another Monday night football game. The Saints are going to be so sad that they just lost that game to the San Francisco 49ers. And I know the Colts are one of those teams like the 49ers that a lot of people are predicting to win the Super Bowl or make a deep run in the AFC playoffs. I still think the Saints win this game at home. I think they match up really well against the Colts because I think the Saints' pass rush is going to be pretty good next year. So give me the Saints moving to 9-5 and five on the year. This is, to me, the one game I feel the most confident about winning on the road this year. In Tennessee, in Nashville, a noon kick on December 22nd. I love the Saints in this one. I think the Tennessee Titans are the most overrated team going into next year. Marcus Mariota will drop down to a below top 20 quarterback in the NFL. Give me the Saints. They will move to 10-5. and five. Moving on to the final regular season game of the year. Now remember, Carolina last year defeated the Saints' final game of the season. With that said, the Saints also were resting all of their starters. Why? Well, they already had the playoffs locked up. So, here's where we are. Ten and a half is the over-under total. Right now, we have the Saints at ten and five. So, if I were to predict them to win, that means they're going to go over the win total this year. If I predict them to lose, that means they're going to go under the win total. So, drum roll, please. I like the Saints to lose this final regular season game and split all their NFC South games. I think Carolina is just too good of a team to beat twice during uh, during the course of a year. Um, Carolina will likely be jockeying for a wild card spot, maybe fighting the Saints and the Falcons for the NFC Championship game. So I am going with Carolina at home, noon kickoff. And that's just the second road game in the road for the Saints. So, I think Cam has a big game if he's healthy at that point in the season. And the Saints lose that game. So, yes, you heard it correctly. They're going under the win total. But, I would stay away from that. Because 10.5 and and predicting a 10-win season, come on. That's just too close. So, before we go... Once again, subscribe to Chat Sports on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you're listening right now, you can just type in youtube.com slash chatsportstv. With that said, and the Saints going under their win total, when you win 10 games in the NFL, you are almost a statistical guarantee to go back to the playoffs. So that's the most important thing. The Saints will return to the playoffs. There will be no hangover from last year, despite how rough that loss was. A few things that do concern me, though. The health of Drew Brees. Can he stay healthy? Will that arm tire out? Obviously, there's more on Alvin Kamara's plate now that Mark Ingram is out. Will the locker room recover after losing a leader like Mark Ingram? So you have that. Defensively, can Marcus Davenport be the player that you wanted him to be whenever you drafted him at a University of Texas, San Antonio. You gave up a first-round pick to get him this year, so you would hope to see, at the bare minimum, a 6-7 sack season, especially with Cam Jordan getting double teams at the other side of the line of scrimmage. So, you know, you need those things to fall into place. Obviously, you need health um, to, to, to be in your favor. Uh, With that said, the Saints will be back in the playoffs, and that is the most important thing. Get the pom-poms back out, baby. The Hoodats are going to make another run to the Super Bowl. So there you go. Once again, at Carter the Power, for more high-energy content, entertainment, comedy, anything you want, at Carter the Power, C-A-R-T-E-R-T-H-E-P-O-W-E-R. And what I'm going to do today, as you can tell, this video is just from here to here. I need my real nerds out there to tell me what movie is this t-shirt from? Can you just tell? I don't know if I want to stand up. 
Can you just tell? Let me know on social media at Carter the Power on any platform. If you could tell me this, I will send you a prize. Okay? Chat Sports TV out.